What has God called you to do? What is His perfect will concerning your life? Right off the top, we can find some general direction for every believer. There are certain assignments and commands that apply to all of us. We know that every believer is called to live holy, according to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 16. Every believer is called to evangelize, according to Mark chapter 16, verse 15. We know that every believer is called to worship, according to John chapter 4, verse 24. We know that every believer is called to pray, according to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. We know that every believer is called to know God's Word, according to Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. We know that every believer is called to demonstrate love, according to Luke chapter 10, verse 27. And we know that every believer is called to serve in church, according to 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. But beyond that, specifically, what has God called you to do? When looking to answer this question, there are two traps about which you need to be aware. While seeking God's will for your life, you must avoid both presumption and paralysis. Both presumption and paralysis will keep you from fulfilling God's perfect will for your life. The trap of presumption works by luring its victims into using a pace of life that is too fast to allow for a pause in which one can hear the instructions of the Holy Spirit. The presumptuous rarely pray about their decisions. They forge ahead without checking the map. They may move quickly and they may even build something that appears to be fruitful. But if you rush ahead of God's instruction, you also rush ahead of His protection, provision, and peace. Never really taking the time to establish a foundation for any phase of life, the presumptuous have to keep stumbling forward in order to catch their footing. This high pressure cycle destroys their joy and gratitude. The trap of paralysis works by holding its prey captive to fear. So afraid of doing something that God did not call them to do, the spiritually paralyzed settle for doing next to nothing at all. They embrace fear and call it wisdom. Like the servant who buried his talent, the fearful assume that God will reward their playing it safe strategy. But that's not the case. When you really think about it, there's arrogance in assuming that while the world is dying and going to hell, God has his rescue workers being prepared for some grand entrance, for their moment of time to emerge as the anointed servants of God who were hidden all along. That makes more sense if you see ministry as a career and not a calling. Of course, there's a biblical balance to all of this. I believe in taking action, moving forward, and even in taking risks. Otherwise, where would be the need for faith? But we must avoid presumption. And I believe in the process before the platform. I believe that God uses seasons of hiddenness to prepare His servants for ministry. I believe in being attentive to hear God's instructions. But we must break free from spiritual paralysis. So how are we to move forward? The answer is, of course, seen in Scripture. Acts chapter 16, verses 6 through 8 say this. Next, Paul and Silas traveled through the area of Phrygia and Galatia because the Holy Spirit had prevented them from preaching the word in the province of Asia at that time. Then, coming to the borders of Mysia, they headed north for the province of Bithynia. But again, the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them to go there. So instead, they went through Mysia to the seaport of Troas. The Lord had to correct Paul's course. Now, the fact that Paul had to change directions in the middle of his journey proves to us that he didn't pray about every detail of his missionary journey. Rather, he saw where there was a need, and then he sought to fill that need by using what God had entrusted to him. We are instructed as we go. So those who lean toward being presumptuous are rescued by the voice of the Holy Spirit. So long as they remain attentive to God's voice through a lifestyle of prayer and the word, they have a safety net. God can correct them as they move. And the spiritually paralyzed don't need to be immobile. They don't have to believe those superstitious, unbiblical myths about God being easily angered by our missteps. They can just look for the need and seek to fill it with what God has given to them. So let's tie together all the threads of these truths. How do you fulfill the specific perfect will of God for your life? You take all that God has given to you, time, resources, influence, talents, gifts, and energy, and you use those to further the gospel. Your specific abilities, 
being used to fulfill God's general mandate. That's the perfect will of God. It's that simple. So long as you remain attentive to His voice, He can correct your course. But you need to be going in order to be guided. Thankfully, we need not to trust in our own ability to know God's will, but rather in His ability to reveal it. I'm David Diga Hernandez, and that is your Moment of Truth. For more free teachings like these, sign up to my emailing list by going to davidhernandezministries.com slash email. When you sign up, you will receive from me a weekly email with content that will bless your life and help you to grow spiritually. And you get a bunch of free downloads when you sign up for the first time. Again, davidhernandezministries.com slash email. It's absolutely free. Sign up to my emailing list right now. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.